Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on experimental techniques. In this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, light microscopy. Okay, now we're going to kickstart our discussion of light microscopes, uh, also called uh, optical microscopes. Okay, whoops. Um, by uh, discussing how lenses work. So we're just going to start by discussing a single lens and how it works and how it achieves magnification. So basically we're going to look at magnifying glasses at the moment and how they magnify their images. Okay, and then we'll go on to microscopes. And microscopes pretty much are just multiple lenses stacked on top of one another. Okay, right. Uh, so. Uh, let's start off with how a lens works then, basically. Alright, so the first concept that we need to discuss is what the focal length of a lens is. Okay, so basically, lenses focus light. Okay, so let me draw a nice lens here. So this is a glass lens here. And if you make the glass a nice shape, uh, then it will focus light. Okay, so let's say this is the side view of our lens, and let's say we now uh, take a point, okay, so let's say, firstly start by taking a point here, and at the moment we're living in the world of maths, basically, so we're going to say this is a minuscule, infinitesimal little point, and it's a point source of light, so light is going to come out from this source here, so you're going to get light rays going in all directions, so I'll draw one here, draw another one here, and I'll draw another one here, another one here, and another one here, and I should have used a ruler, but never mind. Right, okay, um, so what happens is when the light hits the glass, of course what's going to happen is the light is going to refract, so what you can think of is this side of the light is going to get slowed down first, and the other side of the light isn't going to get slowed down because it's hitting at an angle. Okay, so if I draw at the surface of the glass, uh, where should I put it? Here. Okay, and we've got our light beam effectively hitting at an angle like this. So when you hit light onto glass at an angle like this, you can imagine that it's kind of like uh, a train, if you like, running along, uh, and then it hits some really frictiony surface, or you can imagine a car maybe, a car running along, and it's going at this sort of an angle, and then this surface, which is the glass here, this, you can imagine, is a really, really frictiony surface. So this is going to slow this wheel of the car down at first, because this is the first wheel that's going to get here. So if you imagine this is the car, here it comes along. This wheel over here is going to hit the friction surface first, so that's going to be slowed down, whilst this wheel won't have been slowed down yet because it hasn't reached the frictiony surface. So what's going to happen is this side will continue going very fast, and this side will slow down. So what will end up happening is the car will twist, basically, and then the whole thing will be on the frictiony surface, so there's no uh, difference in the speed. Okay, now of course that's just an analogy to explain refraction, really, to children, but uh, it's a useful analogy. Okay, so this is the process of refraction, and all refraction is going to occur to all of these light beams, basically. So this one is going to refract. Now, I have put this too close to the lens for it to actually be focused, so instead, well, to be focused to a point, it is still going to be focused, but it's not going to ever be focused to a point. So. Uh, what instead is going to happen is this will refract a bit, it will go off at a uh, more acute angle if you like. This one will also be refracted a little bit, okay, so it will come down as well like so. This one will be refracted a little bit, okay. Uh, this one will be uh, refracted a little bit, and this one will also be refracted a little bit. Okay, but the point is that all of these light beams from this point source are not going to be uh, converged to a point, basically, and it's because I have put this point source too close to the lens. Now, let me take the point source further back a little bit. Okay, should I draw this on the same picture? I think I will. So I'm going to take the point source back a little bit here, okay, and basically as you move it back, what's going to happen? Well, when you uh, shine these beams on here now, Okay, so here come the beams from this light source now. Okay. 
basically these, this one has a better chance of being focused to a point because it's further back from the lens basically and if you imagine this beam now you can see that its angle is less uh, steep than this light beam's angle so it's going to be refracted and it maybe will end up coming horizontal now okay and basically there is a point that is a certain distance from this lens which is the per well not the perfect point if you're trying to focus it to a point but it's a very special point because if you sh have your point light source here what will happen is all of the beams of light will be refracted so that they are going horizontally and don't worry I'll highlight these in a certain color so that it's more uh, obvious okay so I'll highlight them now in all in blue so if you put your light source at a very special point what will happen is when you shine light from that light source all of the light beams will be deflected or refracted by the uh, surface of the lens and they will all um, zoom off horizontally basically okay now this special point which is a set distance from the lens this is called the focal point and every lens will have its own focal point depending upon how curvy it is okay and of course its size as well so this is the focal point right and the distance between this point and the center of the lens right in here that's known as the focal distance basically or the focal length so this distance is called the focal length and I was assuming that I was having these points sort of you know right in the center of the lens so if we now don't look at the lens in cross section of course it's a circle so I was assuming that these points were both right in the center of the lens basically so if we took take my real magnifying glass it would be you know these points would be somewhere like this basically right above the center of the lens okay and at this length from the focal point to the center of the lens would then be called the focal length now, what is going to happen if you then take the point beyond the focal length, okay? So, let's go beyond the focal length now. Okay, so we're taking our point back to here now. Okay, well, um, should I get a ruler? Have I got a ruler? Yes, I have got a ruler. A rather nasty one, but never mind. Here's my ruler. Okay, so, let me draw these lines nice and straight. Okay, so now with the uh, point source of light further back what's going to happen is these uh, beams of light are all going to be deflected and focused onto a single point so let me try and show this in fact I think I'll need a few more than that okay so I'll put some more here okay I might have to give up on the ruler because it's taking too much time okay but it's made a nice picture right what will then happen is they will be deflected you know this, when you got to the focal point, the beams of light were deflected onto horizontal lines. We're now further than the focal point, so they're all going to be deflected downwards, basically. Okay, and what's going to happen is they're going to be deflected onto some point here. So let's say it's this point. So I'll now connect up these um, beams of light here to uh, the... Um, point and it's slightly inaccurate because of course it should refract when it comes out of the lens as well but we'll ignore that okay so I'll just connect it up like so right the point is that basically if you have a point source of light on uh, one side of the lens that is further back than the focal length what will happen is uh, that point all the light that's in being emitted from that point which is obviously shining off in all different directions all of it will be focused onto a single point over here okay um, right so that's the principle of focusing all the light onto a single point now of course we're not dealing in reality with single points of light instead we're dealing with a whole image basically so let's now discuss this so if we take our lens here, and I'm not going to use the ruler anymore. Okay, we've had our one perfect picture. Um, oh, and I should have just mentioned one more thing. 
you might want to know how far away is this point that it will be focused on, okay? Well, there is an equation that describes that for those of you who want the equation. Okay, so if you want to work out how far away uh, this point where you're going to focus it onto is from the centre of the lens, i.e. this distance here, which we'll call V, you need to know how far away the initial light source point was from the centre of the lens. So you need to know this distance here, the distance from here to here, which we'll call U. So the distance from here to here, the distance from the light source over here, the point light source, uh, to the centre of the lens, we'll call that U. And the distance from the centre of the lens to the point where it's all being focused onto, we'll call that V. So basically there is an equation that says that 1 over U, okay, so if you take whatever uh, number U is, and you take its multiplicative inverse, you take 1 over it, and you add that to the multiplicative inverse of V, okay, so 1 over V, then uh, that will equal 1 over F. Now what is F? Well, F is the symbol for the focal length. So it's a constant that's associated with any lens. So if you give me a lens, I in principle could work out its focal length. And then I know that. So in principle then I could work out what V is if I knew what U is. Okay, so if we rearrange this now, what we'll get is that 1 over V is equal to 1 over F minus 1 over U. Okay, so uh, then combine these two fractions to get that it's U minus F over uh, f times u, and then we can get, well this is 1 over v, then we can get that v is equal to f u, oh dear, uh, over u minus f. That's probably why this equation isn't usually quoted like that. Right, okay, so uh, that's how you would work out the distance from the centre of the lens to the point where all of the light is actually being focused onto, which is this uh, symbol v. Okay, right, now let's actually discuss how the magnifying glass or the lens is actually going to magnify an image for us. Okay, so basically if we take a whole plane of points that are all emitting light now, okay, so let's take two points here. We'll take point A here, here's a middle point, and notice we're now going off the centre. So rather than having points that were in the exact centre of the lens, we've now gone off centre. And let's say we also have a point B down here. Okay, and let's say between point A and point B, we have some pen. Okay, so you can imagine that there is some, uh, let's say a highlighter pen, because that's a nice easy pen to draw. Okay, so let's say there is some highlighter pen here, and you want to uh, magnify that. So I'll colour this in. It can be a green highlighter. Okay, so here is some green highlighter pen, and we want to see how this is going to be magnified. Well, basically, what's going to happen is that all the light is going to emit be emitted from point A, okay? Or at least it's all bouncing off point A. Point A might not actually be emitting light, but certainly light is coming from point A. And I won't draw more than two now, because otherwise it starts to look incredibly messy. Now, basically, what's going to happen here? Well, what happens is that this is all going to be reflected down Okay, and what actually happens is that if you have your point A, which is above this line on this side of the magnifying glass, it will be ref it will be um, deflected down and focused onto a point that maybe is down here. Okay, so let's get this all done with. So basically, points are going to be inverted, and you might say, "Hang on a second magnifying glasses do not turn things upside down. So what on earth is happening here? Okay, well, you're right, they don't. Not when you use them usually, but they can. Okay, I promise you that if you experiment with a magnifying glass enough, you will get it to turn the image upside down. You will make it so that the image is upside down. And I will explain to you in a moment why, when you usually use a magnifying glass, for instance, what we're seeing right now, uh, you are not seeing an inverted image. And basically, it's because this distance here is not big enough. The distance from the image to the magnifying glass is not big enough. And first, also, the image from the magnifying glass to our eyes is not big enough. So if you make the distance between uh, the light source and the magnifying glass or the lens 
and big enough, and you also make the distance between you and the uh, magnifying glass big enough. Uh, I promise you, you will see the image upside down. Okay, so that's a good little experiment for you. Right, uh, I'm not going to attempt to do it on screen because it's just bound to go wrong. It's really difficult to get it in focus as well uh, because obviously you're dealing with larger distances. Right, uh, but I have just done it previously to making this video and I can confirm that it still works. Right, so basically the light is all going to be focused to a point maybe down here. Okay, so this is the image of point A down here. Okay, now let's do it for point B. So exactly the same principle. Point B is going to emit light here. Well, maybe not emit light, but we can imagine it's emitting light. Of course, it's really reflecting it, most likely. Right. And again, what's going to happen is the light will be deflected, and maybe it will be focused up onto some point right the way up here. Okay. Whoops, that, that didn't work well. I'll just have to move it a little bit. Okay, so this is the image of point um, B. Okay, so I'll call it IB. Now, what you can hopefully see is that the distance from IA to IB is much bigger. So basically, if you imagine doing this for every single point on the highlighter, the whole thing is going to get, you know, stretched out. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is you are going to get an image of a highlighter, but you know it's going to be like so. So you're going to get a massive great image of the highlighter, and also it's going to be upside down. Okay, and I know that, um, that um, is against your usual experience of magnifying glasses, but as I say, have a play around, and I'll explain in a moment why, when we usually use a magnifying glass, the image is not upside down. Okay, right, so here is the highlighter upside down. Okay, so, firstly, let's now try and, well, firstly, actually, let's just discuss the fact that we have magnified the image, excellent, that's what it was, that explains why magnifying glasses are capable of uh, magnifying images, but of course, we're not usually using this. Okay, because we don't usually see an image that's upside down. So what are we usually doing with a magnifying glass? 